know, every great man and woman of God who ever sparked or brought on or, or fueled, fired revival believed that when they preached the word that it was going to make a change in the people that they were preaching to right now today in this service. Amen? Not, not okay, well, boy, I sure ha- hope that happens one day. No, the gospel is in our face this morning, isn't it? It's in our face every time we get together. It's in our face in class all week, right? The gospel is right there before us to bring that release of power. And that's what Paul was so passionate about. And the second thing that he talks about the gospel here, he says, um, in it the righteousness of God is revealed in verse 17. So not only is it the power of God, but it's the revelation of God. See, the revelation of his righteousness. Okay, because he says, I want to preach this gospel because in this gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. He said, listen to me, dear brothers and sisters, you need a revelation of the righteousness of God. That's what's going to save you. You don't need more rules. You don't need more law. You don't need more any of those things. You need a revelation of the righteousness of God. Okay, he uses the word righteousness on purpose. Amen, do you believe that? He says, right, you need a revelation of his righteousness, of your right standing with God. You don't need a revelation of how to try harder. You don't need a revelation of how to do better. You need a revelation of the righteousness, the right standing that Christ's blood has purchased for you. That's what we need a revelation of, where we are standing in Christ, where we're seated in Christ, where we walk in Christ. Amen? We are in this place that the blood of Jesus has bought for us that gives us right standing with God, this covenant place in God where everything that he has belongs to me and everything that I have belongs to him. It comes down to the one simple fact that Jesus died in my place. And because he died in my place, it's as though I died myself. And if I died myself, it's as though I've been resurrected from the dead. And you see, he goes on to that further on in the book of Romans. And, and being justified, right? Just as if I'd never sinned. And he put, righteousness puts us in that place. It just shifts us into that place. You're there. You don't have to try any harder to get righteous. righteous comes, righteousness comes through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? Faith in that blood. And to have that revelation of righteousness, not only that we have it, but what it does in our life, what it produces, what does that righteousness make happen in my life and your life? Hey Amen? I mean, is it happening for you? Is righteousness happening for you? Right, is your right standing with God working? I mean, I'm face to face with the creator of the universe in a relationship that's like face to face, really? <laughs> And all of the benefits and all of the things that flow out of that? Well, it's amazing, isn't it? When you think of our right standing with God. And especially when you think of how far we came from being in wrong standing to bang, there you are in right standing through the blood of Jesus Christ. I mean, that is amazing. And Paul says, I'm not ashamed of this gospel because it's giving you a revelation of the right standing that you have with the Father. And he's talking to this church in Rome and he'd never been there before and he, didn't, he wasn't dealing with issues and problems in their lives, but he knows as the apostle that we need to be stirred up, reminded, reestablished, reconfirmed in that right relationship that we have with God. Always working out right, our own salvation with that kind of a fear and that reverence and that trembling before God that in, in, in the blood of Jesus we have righteousness with God. I am the righteousness of God, right? All the old things have passed away, right? All things become new. All things are of God. Are all things of God? In righteousness they are. The Bible says it very clearly. All things are of God. Amen? And so that's what Paul is so passionate about. So he wants us to walk in that kind of a relationship. Now, I can remember when I first got born again, the great revelation that was going around was that, you know, if you were the only person that ever lived, God loved you so much that he would have died for you. Do you ever get that? I mean, they used to tell us that all the time. If you were the only person 
that ever lived. Jesus loved you so much that he would have died for you. And, and always, the first thing that ever came to my mind was, if I was the only person that ever lived, I would have to crucify him all by myself. Right? That's more like it. And the realization that my sin was more than enough to crucify Jesus all by myself, and it really was, and so was yours. Huh? That's really what it comes down to. Well, I wasn't that bad. <laughs> yes, you were. You were worse than that. You probably weren't worse than me, but you were pretty bad. But that's the fact. The fact of it is that that spirit, the sin nature that lived in us was more than enough just in one person to crucify Jesus. And it would have taken his death and resurrection to save me, only if I was the only person that ever lived, just as much as it did to save the whole world. And so when we realize that this is not a pathway to righteousness. Right? It's, it's, it's a, it's a, I don't know, what, what do you call it? It's like, turn it on the switch, man. Either you got it, or you don't got it. See, it's, it's not progressive. Righteousness is not progressive. It doesn't come closer one step at a time. When you believe in Jesus, you become the righteousness of God in Christ Period. End of the matter. And Paul is saying, listen, you've got to walk in this. You'll be fruitful. You'll be powerful. You'll be more than conquerors. And this is one word he uses later on. You'll rule and reign through Jesus Christ, through this life, is another word that he uses. He says, if you could stand in this righteousness, walk in this righteousness, man, always the head and never the tail. Always the winner, never the loser. But it takes a revelation. It takes a passion. It takes a, a dying to self and giving up all of the religious activities and efforts that we would employ in our lives to be able to come closer to God. He's saying, get rid of all that and stand in righteousness through the blood of Jesus Christ. Well, I don't feel very righteous today. has nothing to do with it. You believe first. Amen? So Paul is saying that this passion that I have is because I want to see the gospel preached because it'll bear fruit. And because I want to see you walk in a revelation of righteousness because that'll bring fruitfulness into your life because that's where you need to live.